The Paleolithic Continuity Theory or PCT, Italian, La Teoria della Continuità, since 2010 relabeled as a paradigm, as in Paleolithic Continuity Paradigm or PCP, is a hypothesis suggesting that the Proto-Indo-European language Pi can be traced back to the Upper Paleolithic, several millennia earlier than the Chalcolithic or at the most Neolithic estimates in other scenarios of Proto-Indo-European origins. As advanced by Mario Alanay in his Origini della Lingua d'Europa Origins of the Languages of Europe, published in two volumes in 1996 and 2000, the PCT posits that the advent of Indo-European languages should be linked to the arrival of Homo sapiens in Europe, at around 40,000 years ago. Employing lexical periodization Alanay arrives at a timeline deeper than even that of Colin Renfrew's Anatolian hypothesis, previously the mainstream linguistic theory proposing the earliest origin for Indo-European. Since 2004, an informal workgroup of scholars who support the Paleolithic continuity theory has been held online. Members of the group, referred to as scientific committee, in the website include linguists Zaverio Ballister, University of Valencia, and Francesco Benozzo, University of Bologna, prehistorian Marcel Ott, Université de Liège, and anthropologist Henry Harpending, University of Utah. The Paleolithic continuity theory is distinctly a minority view as it enjoys very little academic support, serious discussion being limited to a small circle of scholars. It is not listed by Mallory among the proposals for the origins of the Indo-European languages that are widely discussed and considered credible within academia. Overview The framework of PCT is laid out by Alanay in four main assumptions. Continuity is the basic pattern of European prehistory and the basic working hypothesis on the origins of IE languages. Stability and antiquity are general features of languages. The lexicon of natural languages, due to its antiquity, may be periodized along the entire course of human evolution. Archaeological frontiers coincide with linguistic frontiers. The continuity theory draws on a continuity model, CM, positing the presence of IE and non IE peoples and languages in Europe from Paleolithic times and allowing for minor invasions and infiltration of local scope, mainly during the last three millennia, arguing that continuity is the archaeologist's easiest pursuit. Alanay deems this the easiest working hypothesis. Putting the burden of proof on competing hypotheses as long as none provide irrefutable counter evidence. Alanay also claims linguistic coherence, rigor, and productivity in the pursuit of this approach. Historical reconstruction Associated with the Paleolithic Continuity Theory PCT is the historical reconstruction proposed by Alanay, which suggests that Indo-European speakers were native in Europe since the Paleolithic. According to this reconstruction, the differentiation process of languages would have taken an extremely long time. By the end of the Ice Age, the Indo-European language family had differentiated into Proto-Celtic, Italic, Germanic, Slavic, Baltic speakers occupying territories within or close to their traditional homelands. The rate of change accelerated when Neolithic social stratification and colonial wars began. Summarizing The colonial expansion of the Celts started much earlier than La Tène culture and proceeded generally from west to east, not vice versa. The Mesolithic cultures of Northern Europe are identified with already differentiated Celtic, Germanic, Baltic and Uralic groups. Scandinavia was colonized by Germanic groups. Only after deglaciation, and was better able to preserve its original character in isolation. Germany, in contrast, suffered fragmentation as a result of the Neolithic appearance of the linear pottery culture, and developed a wealth of dialects. The prehistoric distribution of proto-languages akin to Italic was an important factor underlying the current distribution of Romance languages throughout Europe. The Slavic languages originated in the Balkans and became linked with the Neolithic expansion. This group would be especially identified by the Baden culture. The Paleolithic continuity hypothesis reverses the Kurgan hypothesis and largely identifies the Indo Europeans with Gimbutas's Old Europe. PCT reassigns the Kurgan culture traditionally considered early Indo European to a people of predominantly mixed Uralic and Turkic stock. Alanay argues that the use of borrowed Turkic words in horse terminology, such as kapti, to grab with hands and teeth, 
Yabu, horse. Yam, nomadic caravan tent. Yunta, horse. Generic, Iger, stallion. Homet, horse collar. And Alasa, pack horse. In Samoyedic northern and southern, in some Finno-Ugric languages and Slavic languages, proves the antiquity of Turkic presence in the European area bordering Asia. He suggests that horse domestication originated with Turkic peoples, offering this as an explanation why horse terminology in the European area bordering Asia and in most of Eastern Europe is rooted in Turkic and not Indo-European vocabulary. He supports this hypothesis by making a tentative linguistic identification of Etruscans as a Uralic, Proto-Hungarian people that had already undergone strong Proto-Turkic influence in the 3rd millennium BC, when Pontic invasions would have brought this people to the Carpathian Basin. A subsequent migration of Urnfield culture signature around 1250 BC is said to have caused this ethnic group to expand south in a general movement of people. This is equated with the upheaval of the Sea Peoples and the overthrow of an earlier Italic substrate at the onset of the Etruscan Villanovan culture. <laughs> Genetics In introduction to PCT Mario Alane argues, following Cavalli Sforza, that the distribution of genetic markers largely corresponds to that of languages. He further contends that 80% of Europe's human genetic material dates back to the Paleolithic, and cites Brian Sykes in claiming that only a fifth of European DNA can be traced back to Neolithic incomers. A 2009 study comparing mitochondrial DNA lineages of late hunter gatherers, early farmers, and modern Europeans found large differences between the three groups. In particular, 82% of hunter gatherers had maternal lineages that are rare in modern Central Europeans. The origin of paternal lineages remains difficult to prove because modern science is unable to extract Y DNA haplogroups from Paleolithic samples. However, the recent analysis of Aridi, Polanyi, and Tyler Smith 2007 suggests that R1BM269, the most common Western European haplogroup, may have entered Europe only in the Neolithic. Reception Aline's Origini della Lingue d'Europa was reviewed favorably in 1996 by Jonathan Morris in Mother Tongue, a journal dedicated to the reconstruction of Paleolithic language, judging Aline's theory as being both simpler than its rivals and more powerful in terms of the insights it provides into language in the Meso and Paleolithic. While his book contains some flaws I believe that it deserves to be regarded as one of the seminal texts on linguistic archaeology, although given its lamentable lack of citation in English language circles, it appears that recognition will have to wait until a translation of the original Italian appears. Morris's review was reprinted as the foreword to the 2000 edition of Aline's book, Renzi 1997 sharply criticized Aline's book, refuting in particular the claim of the presence of Latin and of its different territorial forms in Italy in the 2nd millennium BC. Renzi argues that this theory would subvert firmly established concepts of Romance philology and dialectology, such as the concepts of substratum, vulgar Latin and so on. Aline's theory was again critically reviewed by Adiego Lajara 2002. Although some of Aline's reflections on linguistic change are very interesting, it should be said that certain conceptions in his work, such as the excessive immobility of languages or the relationship between types of language and progress in the prehistoric lithic industry, are very debatable. Aline's core theory, continuity from the Paleolithic, runs into a serious difficulty. It obliges us to deal with words traditionally reconstructed for Indo European, referring to notions that did not exist in the Paleolithic as loans, when from the formal standpoint they are indistinguishable from those Aline sees as being Indo European in the Paleolithic period. See also Indo European substrate hypotheses Proto-Indo-European language Proto-Indo-Europeans Proto-Indo-European or Heimat hypotheses Indigenous Aryan theory Regional continuity model Polygenism References Literature Adams, Jonathan and Ott, Marcel. Did Indo-European languages spread before farming? Current Anthropology, 40, No. 1. 
February, 1999, pp. 73 to 77. 3. Alain A. Mario. An alternative model for the origins of European peoples and languages: the continuity theory. Quaderni di Semantica 21, 2000, pp. 21 to 50. Alain A. Mario, 2002. Towards a generalized continuity model for Uralic and Indo-European languages. In the Roots of Peoples and Languages of Northern Eurasia IV, edited by K. Jilku. Alan A. Mario. Interdisciplinary and Linguistic Evidence for Paleolithic Continuity of European, Uralic and Altaic Populations in Eurasia. Quaderni di Semantica, 24, 2, 2003. <laughs> External links Continuitas. Org. Principal PCT website Review of Mario Alines, Origini della Lingue d'Europa Origins of the Languages of Europe by Jonathan Morris.